Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining one of our Baptist Health programs. My name is Amy Exum. I'm a licensed mental health counselor and program manager of Community Health. Excited to present to you today, Brandon K. Welch, pharmacist, clinical wellness pharmacist. He is also a certified wellness coach and has extensive experience in retail pharmacy. So we hope that you will enjoy this brief presentation. I will turn it over to Brandon now, who will be able to present to you. Thank you so much for the introduction, Amy. In case a lot of you guys are wondering what exactly is a clinical wellness pharmacist. So a lot of my role entails looking at the patient as a whole. You know, I obviously know the, the part of prescription medications, but also how do we address other lifestyle interventions to help maximize the therapeutic effect of these medications that some of you may be take, taking, such as stress management, exercise, sleep, movement. For the purpose of this, for the purpose of this topic, today we are going to today we're going to be talking about the confusion around reading a prescription label. I'm sure a lot of you guys question all these different elements on a prescription label, and I'm here today to address them. Now, how to read a prescription label. So at the top is our first name, right? So we have here Jane Q. Public. Right below that is typically the patient's address. So whatever address you have plugged into the pharmacy system that you currently go to, that's going to be right below your name. To the right of that is going to be the date, the date the actual prescription was filled. Right underneath of that in that red box, right, we see the name of the drug. So the name of the drug here is ibuprofen. We have the strength right next to it, 800 milligrams. And then we have what's called the dose administration, which is the tablets. Right below that is we have the name of the manufacturer. This could be, this could be very important is because let's just say if your prescription does not come in what's called like an amber vial and it comes in its original stock vial, a good way to identify if you're getting the correct prescription is to look at this manufacturer right below the prescription, the name of the prescription. Right below that, another important element is the directions. So how do we take this medication? So it says here, take one tablet by mouth twice daily as needed for pain. So you're gonna take this medication twice throughout the day. Typically when I see twice daily like this, that means you're taking one tablet in the morning and more than likely one tablet in the late afternoon or evening. And as you guys can also see, it says as needed. So you're only taking this medication whenever you experience any type of uncomfortable pain. So right underneath that, you'll see too, is your highlighted Rx number, right? This is pretty much the patient's drug identifier number. And so this is a good way too to like, let's just say if your system has it set up to where you can um, log, into, log into the pharmacy's app and put in for prescription refills. This is the number that you will typically put in. So this number here that says one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that is your prescription number. Where you see that dash, right? And the numbers to the right of that, that is typically the pharmacy's location number. And I'll use Walgreens, for example, right? And so that one, two, three, four, five will be Walgreens store number one, two, three, four, five. Underneath the highlighted Rx number is going to be the quantity. So how many tablets was the prescription written for? And so it was written for a quantity of 60. And then right below that is going to be how many refills did the doctor call in for you? So right here, it shows that you have no refills. So you can either do one or two things. You can contact the pharmacy and let them know, hey, can you please fax my doctor to request more to request more refills for my prescription? Or you can reach out to the doctor's office to let them know that you have no more, no more refills on your prescriptions. And then right below that is the name of the pharmacy. So we have here Walgreens. 
And then this is the address of that pharmacy that you go to. And so, for example, Walgreens, and this is the address that we have for the Walgreens that you shop at. Right below that is going to be Walgreens phone number. So this is going to be the number that you'll call if you have any questions for the pharmacist or if you want to call in and speak to the technicians to let them know, hey, is there any refills that are on my profile or if there's any refills that they can put in for you. Now, to the right of that, you have your doctor's name. Right here, they use an example in the far right, Dr. D. Intercom. So Dr. D. Intercom is an example of what your doctor's name is. Also, typically you'll see, which isn't on this label, is you'll see the doctor's phone number. And so you'll have access to contact the doctor as well if you have any questions for them or if you don't have a phone number handy. Now, right above that, this is going to be very important, right? This is our expiration date, which can be interchangeably used for a use before. So here it shows 6-21-2015. So we need to make sure we use this medication before that date. If we try to use it after that date, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's toxic, but then the tablets or the medication starts to disintegrate. It starts to lose its potency and the integrity of the medication. So it won't work as well and it won't be as effective. And then to the far right of that, is our um, is our barcode, right? So this is the barcode that the that the uh, pharmacy uses to verify that you are getting the right medication. It's a double verification check to make sure that the medication that was filled or that was uh, that was put in from the pharmacy text was correctly verified by the pharmacist. Now going into the next slide, we're going to go over a very, very important element, which is our auxiliary labels. Why are these important? Because this goes over side effects, this goes over how to store the medications, and this sometimes goes over like what things you need to look out for when you're taking this medication. All right, so our first auxiliary label as an example it says shake well and keep in refrigerator. So oftentimes like our suspensions or our solution medications, they need to be kept in the refrigerator um, every time we're not using it. And I'll use an antibiotic for an example. These are suspensions that are typically kept in the refrigerator and aren't normally stored at room temperature. So if we're not using the medication, we need to keep it at room temperature. Now, shake well. This is really important is because oftentimes with suspensions, the medication starts to, starts to settle at the bottom. And so it's important that we shake the medication well every time we use it so that we can suspend the medication particles so that the medication can be delivered effectively to our body. Our next auxiliary label to the right here, store away from direct sunlight and keep in a cool place. So some medications are photosensitive to light. And what this pretty much means that when exposed to light, the medication can potentially lose its integrity. So we wanna make sure that we keep the medication away from light and keep it in a cool place, which is typically room temperature. As long as we don't keep it in the hot sun, we should be fine. Now, moving over to the right again, may cause drowsiness. So this is one of the side effects that can potentially be from your medications to make sure you are aware of. So typically medications that may cause drowsiness, you typically may want to take them in the late afternoon, early evening, when you aren't um, doing any type of driving or transporting yourself anywhere. So that way, you know, you can make sure you're, you're conscious while you're taking this medication. Um, and, um, and that's about it for that one. Now, moving all the way to the bottom left, this is the time, this is an auxiliary label that indicates what's the time we should take the medication. So this medication here with this auxiliary label shows that it's best to take this medication in, in the nighttime or in the late evening, PM. Next, our auxiliary, our, auxiliary, our auxiliary label here in the green, medication should be taken with plenty of water. So some medications such as tablets 
Um, if we don't drink enough water, sometimes the medication can sit what's on what's called our stomach lining. And sometimes we'll have to knock that medication off our stomach lining by making sure we drink enough fluids or water because it helps with the absorption of the medication. Um, first thing I can think of is a medication called levothyroxine, which is a medication for thyroids. This medication is typically taken with plenty of water um, to help with the absorption of it. Our next auxiliary label here is swallow whole, do not crush, break, or chew. So sometimes patients think that we can crush a medication or cut the tablet um, because the medication may be too big to take, or for example, if we want to try to take it, um, you know, in like applesauce or, um, or yogurt, because we want to use that as a way to mask the taste. Well, unfortunately, unfortunately, by you trying to crush, break, or chew the medication, um, again, it can affect its absorption and its effectiveness. So it's important you take the medication and swallow it whole with possibly a glass of water or any type of fluid source. Thank you guys so much for listening in to my presentation. Um, if you have any questions, we have plenty of retail pharmacies in the Fort Lauderdale and uh, in Miami-Dade area that you guys can have access to our pharmacists if you have any questions regarding our prescription, regarding your prescriptions. Thank you so much, Brandon. We really appreciate your time. That was really great information. I think sometimes we think those labels are more um, light suggestions than actually things that we're supposed to be doing. So it's really helpful to be able to understand that as well. If anyone is interested in joining more class classes, please join baptisthealth.net slash community health. And we hope that Brandon will join us again in the future. Have a great day, everyone.